well as always the weekend has become chaotic so for today instead of trying to focus on multiple um, wrestling shows I decided to do uh, just New Japan with Power Struggle and Collision so basically it took much of my time away from what I was gonna do but I was gonna try to make them up as much as possible since with still some shows available from last October but for right now as you know for Power Struggle by New Japan we have the winners of the Super Junior Tag League we do have a couple of t uh, title matches the never open way six-man tag team titles the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship and not to mention the IWGP United States UK, UK title also on the line a, as you know, we have AEW Collision. We have some interesting matchups to take place. Uh, of course, we have our main event. We have Roosh, who returns after many months from injury. He teams up with not only with Preston Vance, but also with FTR to take on Absolute Ricky Starks, Big Bill, and of course, the Gates of Agony. And of course, we're going to cap it up with some news updates to tell what's been going on in the world of pro wrestling, such as what events the promotions are throwing out, who's booked, what matches are set, any wrestlers that have either been signed or departing from their promotions, any wrestlers that are injured, the whole enchilada. So, let's get ready for another episode of Deleted Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to the Lead It Wrestle Zone. All things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, Impact Wrestling, the National Wrestling Alliance, various promotions, wrestlers, matches, and championships. I am your host, Jay right here. So, if you are new to the channel, welcome. This is where we do a lot of reviews from various promotions, not only here in the United States, but also in Japan, Mexico, Canada, Europe, the UK, anywhere in the world where wrestling is not as big, but it is growing. We also do some discussion videos, talk about various topics such as the wrestlers, the promotions, storylines, whatever we can get our hands on. We also do more news updates in case I'm unable to put it on this episode, but at another time, we also do some news update alert and various other things. So if you like what you see, please subscribe to us on the subscribe button. You'll be getting a lot of daily reviews and other cool stuff on this channel. But if you like this episode, please give us a like on the like button or a nice comment down below. Now, let's begin with New Japan Pro Wrestling with Power Struggle, where as you know, this is the finals of the Super Junior Tag League. As you know, we started about a couple weeks ago. We have two winners, two finalists who end up only one will walk away as the winner. Will it be the House of Torture, the most hated group in the entire New Japan roster, or one of the most fan favorites um, in New Japan, Catch 2-2? Two -two? We'll find out. But first, let's start from the very first show, the first match of the pre-show. We have the... Frontier Zone Six Man Tag Match. Now, if you're unfamiliarized with what that is, uh, whenever they do Frontier Zones, these are they bring in wrestlers from other promotions, and this time they bring in wrestlers from Dragon Gate. Uh, we have Yoshiko Kato, Mochizuki Jr., and Strong Machine J. They take on Bolton Oldleg, the DKC, and Ryosuke Taguchi. So, you probably think this is going to be a very interesting matchup. Well, it did. It was Taguchi who picked up the win with the ankle lock onto, I believe it was on, uh, Mochizuki Jr. So basically, it was a very easy peasy. Now, let's start with the main card. We have the Young Lions, Oscar Lobe, and Yuto Nakashima. They take on the members of the of the United Empire, Cal Newman, and of course, um, who was it, Jeff Cobb? Yes, Jeff Cobb. Uh, you probably would have assumed this is going to be a much interesting match. However, I figured this match was going to in favor of the of the United Empire as soon as 
uh, Jeff Cobb applied the tour of the islands on Oscar Lobe to pick up the win. Now our next match is a bit of a, how do I say, okay, bittersweet type finals type match. We have the members of T uh, TMDK, Kosa Fujita and Robbie Eagles versus Masush Musashi and Yo versus Master Wato and Desperado versus the Bullet Club War Dogs. Now keep in mind, all four of these teams were involved in the Super Junior Tag League. This will be the last time certain people will not be together. As you know, Musashi and Yo, uh, they were a makeshift team. I mean, they were not one of the most popular te uh, teams, but they did work pretty well. Master Watu and Despi, uh, well, they were the one team that many fans probably were hoping that would win, but it did not. But they faced also two teams that are already established, TMDK and the War Dogs. But however, in the end of this match, it was the crucifix by um, by Despi that picked up the win on Kosa Fujita. Fujita kind of protests the fact that he thought he got out, but apparently the ref made the final call. It goes up to the, um, of course, to um, to Despi and Wato, and this will be the last time we see them. Now our next match, we have the Jet Setters, Kevin Knight and Kushida. They team up with the former Never Openweight Champion, uh, Tama Tonga. Uh, recently, we have seen those two, uh, Tama and the Jet Setters, team up before. Uh, they, they did pretty well. Um, they take on the members of LIJ, consistent of Titan, Bushi, and of course, uh, the man that beat Tama for the Never Openweight Championship, Shingo Tagagi. So you probably would have seen. I have to say, I like seeing Tama and the Jet Setters team up. I know one time I remember seeing Kushida when he was no longer with New Japan. He went to Florida to hang out with his buddy Tama. I would love to see the Jet Setters be part of the go of the go of the Gorillas of Destiny because I felt like they couldn't work together very well. And not to mention, to me, I feel they need some junior heavyweight competitors in their ranks. I mean, you look at everybody currently in the, the Gorillas of Destiny: Tama, Hikuleo, Tangaloa, and um, LP. All four of them are heavyweights. They need junior heavyweight competitors. I would like to see, I mean, make the Jet Setters members, but keep them as Jet Setters as well. So I think it would be a fun team to watch. Uh, but I have to say it was pretty awesome. But it was, of course, the gun stun by Tama onto Bushi. So that picked up a pretty good win right there. Next up, we got the other members of Ally J, consistent of Yoda Suji and Tetsuya Naito taking on just five guys, Yuya Uemura and Sonata. Now, there's a lot of factors of this match if you guys have been following. Yoda Suji and Yuya Uemura are part of the same class during the New Japan Dojo until they went their separate ways. However, uh, there was that one match where it ended in a time limit draw between them. But don't forget, Sonata and Naito will see each other at Wrestle Kingdom for the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship. As you know, Naito is the winner of this year's G1, and Sonata will. Sonata and Naito know pretty know each other pretty well. Sonata as a former member of, of course, of Lij, but in the end, of course, it was going to be down between the two younger members. We're talking about Suji and Uemura, but it was the Gene Blaster by Uemu by. Yoda Suji that put away Uemura, which I feel like is a good statement. But however, Uemura is still a bit more young, but he can, I'm sure he'll pick up a good one against them. So basically, we'll see what happens until then. Now, our next match, we have David Finley versus Tom Tangaloa. Now, as you know, I'm sure there's no love loss between both Tom, uh, David Finley and Tangaloa because, as you know, um, I'm sure they're not happy with they're still not happy with the fact that Tongaloa and his brother and the rest of G.O.D. took an LP to be part of the group but um, of course that this was going to be uh, not a fair fight because Ghetto got involved, tossed the shillelagh whacking um, Tongaloa and then of course applying the into the oblivion so that sort of thing goes out now this match was set upon a while back during Royal Quest. The Great Okan, who's not been in a good state of mind, he's been in a losing streak for a long time, he decided to challenge John Moxley. However, um, 
This match did not turn into a no contest, but Moxley felt that this is not how it's going to end, so he turned it into a false count anywhere match. You know that Moxley is going to bring the fight to him. So did uh, Great Okan. They went everywhere, but however, uh, the match had to be stopped by reference stop, uh, stoppage because, of course, um, Great Okan was no was not uh, responding. However, as soon as that was over, they tried to separate Great Okan. He was not in a good mood, but later it was revealed that uh, Cal Newman and Jeff Cobb had to take him to the hospital. He might have hurt himself or so, but we'll see. Now, our next match, this is one of three title matches. We have the Never open weight six man tag team titles. Uh, the challengers, of course, is TMDK members um, Shane Hayes, Mikey Nichols, and Zack Saber Jr. They take on the champions um, Tomo Iro Ishii, Hiroshi Tanahashi, and Kakuchika Okada. Now, we know that they were able to pick up a win against one of these guys and they got the opportunity. So you would have assumed that we could have had brand new tag champions due to the extreme uh, cohesiveness between TMDK. But however, we have seen Tanahashi, you know, um, Ishii, and Okada. They got, they've got. always been working well. Even though the factors of that team is Okada and Tanahashi, they trust each other. They're both two of the greatest wrestlers we've seen. Ishii, who had his issues towards Tanahashi, who's willing to put it to the side knowing they are the champions. But of course, like any other match, we did see an inside cradle by Tanahashi. A move that it's an easy one to the pull off, but the unexpected move onto Zack Sabre Jr. And he picked up the win for his team. But however, because of this match, this could be another factor that's been added up. As you know, Zack Sabre Jr. is the current New Japan World Television Champion. Tanahashi pinned him. So he could actually issue the challenge for him. So that is the possibility. But however, lights turned off. Apparently we had a surprise video message from none other than the American Dragon, Brian Danielson. Apparently he has some unfinished business with Okada after what happened in AEW, breaking an Ordomo bone. So apparently he's going to challenge him at Wrestle Kingdom. Of course, Okada heard what he had to say, so most likely it will happen. So he accepted it. Now... The finals of the Super Junior Tag League, the House of Torture, Yoshinobu Kanemaru and uh, Sho were going to be in, uh, in this match. They take on Catch 2-2s, Francesco Akira and TJP. However, before the bell even rang, Effin, Evil, Dick Togo and Yudro showed up attacking Catch 2-2, but they were able to separate them as much as possible. I mean, the match went normally, but once again, when the referee is out, here comes Effin House of Torture getting involved again. But luckily, uh, Jeff Cobb and Cal Newman showed up to give a helping hand to get rid of the trash once the referee was out. But of course, the resilience between with Catch-2-2 -Two -Two to pick up a win, they were able to put away uh, Kanemaru with the 2-2, Two -Two, and it was over. And we have this year's uh, Super Junior Tag League winners. But however... Their little moment was cut short with the sudden arrival of the current IWGP Junior Heavyweight Tag Champions, the War Dogs, um, Drilla Maloney, and of course, Clark Connors. They considered this whole thing with the tournament a load of horse crap in their opinion. They even desecrated the, the trophies that Catch-2 have won, and I'm sure that this is going to be a measure of revenge by Catch-2 to, to destroy the War Dogs. So, they, of course, the War Dogs ran like cowards once they saw Cobb and Newman to give the helping hand. But you know this is not the end of it. So, sooner or later, they will come across each other. So, we'll see what happens until then. Now, our next match, this is the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship. Taiji Shimuri versus... Um, um, Hiromu Takahashi. Now these two guys know each other very well. Uh, if you guys remember, it was Ta um, Hiromu who defeated Ishimori for the belt that resulted for him to go out of commission for a while due to an injury. But this match was incredibly awesome. I mean, I'm sure Ishimori pulled every every 
thing that he had against him. But of course, it was a modified roll up by Eremu that put away Ishimori and picking up the win. Post match, Ishimori said, I mean, um, Hiromu said to people to tell tell um, Ishimori, welcome back. So basically, he was happy that he told him to welcome back. But however, it appears that's been. You probably ask yourselves, who will be the next challenger for Hiromu for the title? Well, he nominated his opponent for Wrestle Kingdom, and of course, as someone who uh, people say have considered two of the best. And they have been the faces of the promotion. We're talking about Despi. Now, those two have long away. Harimu has always been the one who says that he's the face of the junior heavyweight division. As for Despi, he doesn't like to consider himself the face, but he considers himself the guy who can elevate the junior heavyweight division. However, he did state that he will not be able to do preview matches against him due to the fact that he needs surgery, but he said he'll be back before Wrestle Kingdom, so that is something I'm sure Hiromu is looking forward to. Uh, but also, I still don't know what's going to happen for the DDT Iron Man Heavy Metal Weight Championship that Ishimori took from him, but we'll get to that some other point. Now, our main event is the IWGP United States slash UK title. Uh, Shota Umino and Will Ospreay. Man, this match was beyond perfection. I have to say, Umino has pulled every stop. He even bringed out the fire into Will Ospreay and everything they did to try to put him up. Now, there was a moment where, of course, Will Ospreay was about to teach him a lesson. But, however, John Moxley shows up and te gives encouragement to Shooter and tells him not to give up. And, of course, that gave him the motivation. But that match was insane but however once again it was Will Ospreay with the hidden blade and of course the Stormbreaker that put away um, Umino he even mentioned that he actually pull, pushed him to his limits up to 40 minutes that is someone who's never done that before but however once he saw John Moxley there was one thing we realized if you guys are unaware Will Ospreay has some unfinished business with John Moxley now. There have been times where, of course, Will Ospreay has right, written wrongs against him. Like, the match with Kenny is one of them. However, there was another match that was a wrong against him, and that was, of course, against Moxley from last year, where he kicked out on three, but the referee counted anyway. However, when they were, in fact, confronting each other, they were viciously attacked by David Finley. Finley tells Moxley that he had no right to be in his ring without his permission. Of course, Moxley's not going to give permission to a dickwad like David Finley, who thinks that he runs the, the ring. But however, David Finley has another moment thing in mind. He says that he has some unfinished business with Will Ospreay. So basically, he wants to end his career once and for all. Like trying to say that your time is almost up. It's time for you to go. But he decided to do something about it. He destroyed both belts. The United States belt and the UK belt. And of course, that's what is going on. But however, Finley only attacked because he will not allow for Will Ospreay to turn this into a WrestleMania match set. So he feels that that's not going to happen under his watch. But however, because of that, Will Ospreay has two enemies to contend. One is to right the wrong that happened with Moxley. And two... It's for a guy like David Finley saying, okay, so you want. But during post-match comment, he did state that he wants it. But now he wants a brand new title. Since this belt is not that he worked so hard to elevate, it's been destroyed. So he's telling, new, imploring New Japan to build a new one. Now, there have been teases about bringing back the IWGP Intercontinental Championship. But um, there haven't been any word about that just yet. But we'll see what happens until then. But for now, we'll end things right now with in New Japan and move on with AEW Collision. Okay, AEW Collision. It opened up with Swerve Strickland taking on AR Fox. Now, in the backstage area, Fox attacked Swerve 
because if you guys remember not too long ago Fox was part of the mobile in mobile embassy but it was uh, of course Fox was fired from Swerve after failing to destroy Darby but of course this match was gonna go straight to Swerve because he knows exactly what AR Fox is thinking he applied the stomp but however of course the mogul embassy more specifically the gates of agony surrounded AR Fox to take him out but however FTR who they'll meet later will confront them and of course um, Big Bill and of course Stark showed up and then LFI so it became more like okay uh, we're gonna see what's gonna happen at the end of the night now um, an interview with Kip Sabian last time in in Philadelphia he was humiliated in front of everybody thanks to the return of Mark Briscoe so he initiated a trios match against him he take he teams up with two of the baddest men and should I say more of the most um, blue-collar type wrestlers we're talking about the workhorseman Anthony Henry and Mark Briscoe I mean Anthony Henry and JD Drake so he tells Briscoe pick two partners so basically he thinks that's going to go down. Now, our next match is of course the Kingdom consisting of Mike Bennett and Matt Taven. They take on a couple of guys in the Crucible consistent of Brixton um Nash and Jameson McGregor, but uh of course this match was definitely going to go straight to uh, the Kingdom when they applied a spike pile driver and it was over right from there. But a post-match, Roderick Strong got out of his wheelchair and attacked one of, I think it was Nash, and it was over right from there. And now, we do see an interview with uh, Mark Briscoe. As you know, he was surprised by some friends of his and adversaries that he, fa he and his brother faced were talking about FTR. They were willing to tag team, but however, he told them that he did not want them to put on the burden to do double duty. He says, look, you guys have some business to take care of. You know, I have your back. So he tells him, deal with them. I, He says, I'll, I'll deal with this one. But he did say that they'll meet up later to have some good time. So he hasn't divulged, but he did tell Lex Mir that he's not going to divulge who it is. He just got to say, we're just got to wait and see. Now our next match, Lance Archer versus Darby Allen. You probably can guess this match is one of those moments where the resiliency with um, Darby. As you know, he's the kind of guy who you say he should end up dead. But he's not. He's still kicking no matter what he does. But it did not. T um, he went through all the pain and hell from um, Lance Archer. But however, Jake the Snake Robert was right there watching. He was about to take out Darby with his own skateboard. But the ref saw it, so he kicked him out. But however, it was Darby Allen with some like a kind of code red type maneuver or like an avalanche version of it picked up the win against Archer. However, Jake the Snake Roberts has is building an army. He introduced new members, and those members are the Righteous. But because of the result, uh, that uh, Lance Archer actually put, put applied that black hole and the blackout, and it was over right from there. But the question is, will Darby Allen be okay by Wednesday? As you know, he and Sting will team up against, uh, team up with Edge to take on Christian Cage, Nick Wayne, and of course Luchasaurus. So we'll see what happens until then. Now, um, Willow Nightingale and Chris Sattlander set up this interview to talk to Sky Blue. As you know, things seem like they're okay for now, but. Of course, Sky Blue is telling Willa Nanko the, the she should be worried about focusing on her match against Emi Sakura. Uh, we'll get to that in a bit. Now, another interview we do have Alex Brahamantes, who, of course, is putting out a great win that he had on Rampage. But, however, he was interrupted by Swerve. But Alex Brahamantes, who did not appreciate what Swerve did, breaking into Hangman's fat home where his family was, but he knows that Penta, will, who has a family, will not tolerate someone breaking into his house. So, we will see a match between them this coming Wednesday or so. So, I'm looking forward to that. Now, before our next match, um, the Acclaim celebrate their 69th anniversary. 69-day uh, anniversary. So, that kind of, they went and threw out a little party. But, however, um, 
apparently Daddy Ass and Bowens did something for Max Caster. MJF did little videos saying that, you know, he appreciated that Max Caster took a bullet for him. He, and, of course, he's taking the advice from um, Adam Cole telling him that it's okay to have more than one friend. So he's saying that Max and the Acclaim are starting to grow on him, you know. But only time will tell. But, however, they decided to put themselves in an open challenge type match for the trio's titles. But Dalton Castle showed up with the boys. He's been frustrated for the entire time. So he attacked them and destroyed the trophy. And, of course, they were out of control. But, of course, it was the acclaim who walked out with, as the winner when they applied a mic drop onto one of the boys. And that was simple. Now, the obvious question we know. We have seen CJ Perry trying to gain to new clientele. However, amongst them is Andrade. Now, he hasn't initially set up his what his offer is going to be. However, he said that what he does is his business. But he's willing to talk about this face to face with CJ so he will meet up with her next week so that's going to be interesting now our next match Kip Sabian and the War Horsemen take on Mark Briscoe and partners of his choosing and those partners turn out to be the the natural Dustin Rhodes and of course Limitless Keith Lee you know this is going to be a banger of a match in every way possible um i was impressed with this match because of course there were moments we did see lee and drake getting each other's faces but in the end of this match it was the froggy bow who put away kip saving to pick up the win now during the interview with lexanir he is happy that he won but however he has his eyes set on jay white calling him a pretender so he decides that he's going to challenge him. So basically, this is going to be a much interesting matchup. Now, our next match is Emi Sakura versus Willow Nightingale. Now, this is a rematch from a few months back in January. Now, if you guys know this or not, I was there when that match happened. There, It was during Rampage when Willow Nightingale was, in fact, the New Japan Strong Women's Champion. He put She put the belt on the line against Emi Sakura. However, Emi Sakura was uh, what came up short. So this is a much of a revenge match. But however, it was Will and Nightingale with the Dr. Bomb that put away Emi Sakura, giving her the win. Now, Lexi Nina replied another interview with this time with Samoa Joe. As you know, jo Samoa Joe is the current and reigning Ring of Honor World Television Champion, saying that he has defeated everyone that stood in his way. However, there is one t person that he hasn't, and that is none other than Limitless Keith Lee. I say make it happen. But there is one thing that kind of gets me thinking. What does Shane Taylor think of this? Because I'm sure Shane Taylor has some unfinished business with Keith Lee, but that's going to be interesting. But we'll get to that at some point. Now, our main event is Ricky Starks, Big Bill. Teaming up with the Gates of Agony, Bishop Khan, and Tail Leona, along with that dumbass Prince Nana. They take on, of course, um, the La Facción Ingobernable, Rush, and Preston Vance, along with um, Dralistico and Jose. They team up with FTR. I have to say it was a pretty good teamwork with FTR and LFI. I have to say it was very fun. However, I don't think any of the rest, any but both, I don't think Starks, Big Bill, or um, Gates of Agony has ever dealt with guys like LFI because these guys they don't play games they're not good guys they're not bad guys they just love the fight and through throw in their own set of rules and I think that's something that I think they did not expect but however it was Bishop Khan who got the the, the horns from the bull himself Roosh to pick up the win however at the match FTR were willing to shake the hands of LFI but however it appears that Hey, we don't need that. We're in it for ourselves. But however, they were viciously surprised by the House of Black saying, where's your friend? And they were referring someone, which is CM Punk. And then, of course, they attacked them. But out of nowhere, here comes BCC, who still has some unfinished business with the House of Black. Well, we're going to see what takes place after that. So I think that's pretty much it, what we have with AEW Collision. 
um, let's move on with some news updates. Okay, welcome to some news updates. Uh, this is what we have for everyone so far. Uh, WrestleCade, which is going to take place this month on the 24th of November, they announced that Space Jesus, Billy Starks, will be participating. So I have to say that's a pretty good one. Now, on the last episode featuring the news updates, I did reveal that the grizzled young veterans who have been now making a play in the independence here in the United States, well... They made an announced that they will be making an appearance at House of Glory on the 1st of December. However, they announced already who their opponents is going to be. It's none other than uh, Jay Lyons and Midas Black, the main event. I have to say that's going to be a fun match to watch. Now, here in Japan, um, if you guys are familiarized with this person, Ichika Miyabi, if you're unfamiliarized who she is, um, Miyabi is a transgender female wrestler. Um, she made her debut about a year ago or so. Um, they just recently had a match. Uh, their, PP, their, the promotion she normally operates with, PPP Tokyo, um, she announced that she'll be, by January, taking a break from wrestling due to the fact that she'll be getting, um, how do I say? Well, let me put this on my notes. A gender reassignment surgery. So basically, she wants to come out back. She'll be back more beautiful than she has ever watched before. Um, yeah, so it's interesting to see that. Yes, there are transgender wrestlers in Japan as well. So I have nothing against that. Now, finally, we have uh, West Coast Pro with uh, certain things. Uh, they announced that they are up show on the 17th of November. I think this is the Whitlap show in in LA for the Ukraine Culture Center. They announced it's going to be free on YouTube. And I think I got the card for that particular match, for that event. Let me pull it up. Um, we do have the, we have the main event. It's going to have Crystal, uh, feature Chris Hero versus Timothy Thatcher. The West Coast Pro Championship uh, Char Starboard Charlie defends it against Chris Bay. Um, we do have a grudge match between Masha Slavich and Johnny Robbie. Um, Alpha Zoe versus the bounty hunter Brian Keith. A six man tag team match the South Pacific Savages versus Los Suavecitos. Then we have a number one contenders match for the West Coast Women's Championship match. We have Sandra Moon versus Rachel Ellering. Kevin. Blackwood takes on the um, crazy Cajun, Gia Jewel. Then there's a tag match. Uh, Beef Tank versus Steve Maglin and Weston, Weston Blake. And then finally, JT Thorne versus uh, Derek Dillinger. So, yep, that's the card for that particular day. However, uh, they did announce for their monster event on the 3rd of December. Black Tours will be taking place. So, I have to say, this is a pretty good um, a I think this is going to be a lot of fun as well to watch as well. I think that's pretty much it for our news updates. So I think let's just call it a day. Um, well, that's pretty much what we have for everyone. Um, well, I haven't decided yet what I'm going to do. I do know we have, I still got two GCW shows that just came out. Um, See or No and Please Buddy. Two back-to-back -back shows. Turning Point by Impact Wrestling. Uh, we do have the crown jewel. I haven't decided whether I'm going to review it or not, but I'll make up my mind on that. Um, we do have the Gleet show, the recent PP, the PPV Tokyo show as well on YouTube. Uh, we'll see what happens until then. I haven't made up my mind. I'm just going to wing it for everyone. See what happens until then. But for now, I will see you guys in the next DWZ time. Same DWZ channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So, goodbye. And have a nice day.